so far, we developed two of the critical pieces of structure, and today we're going to do the other two. But I first want to remind you what those two critical pieces of structure were. Number one was the concept of state space, where X and Y can be sharks and tuna, can be insulin and glucose, can be pretty much anything and anything. And this state space, each point in state space, represents, this is a certain number of glucose units or sharks, and uh, this is a certain number of insulin units or tuna, and this is the point x0, y0, representing this many units of glucose and this many units of insulin. And so this is state space. And um, in the book, we color code this with the color black. But we're using a black background here, so we're going to put this in this very light orange. So that is state space. And then the second concept that we developed was the concept of the change arrow. Or if we want to be fancy, the change vectors. And the change vectors are given to us by the model or the differential equation, which is as usual written in this form. And the differential equation, you recall, we're using as a recipe to set up the change arrows. So we're at the point x0, y0. We plug x0, y0, x0, y0. We get x0 prime, y0 prime. And we draw that as the change vector right here, x0 prime, y0 prime. That is the change vector at that point. And of course, this differential equation gives us a change vector at every point, going however it's going to go. And now the question is, this is what we've done so far, now we want to go forward and we want to ask the question, how do we obey these change vectors? How does the system change given that these are the change vectors at every point? So we can think of it this way. The change vector at the point is an instruction. It's an instruction to move in a certain direction, in this case, northeast. And it's an instruction to move at a certain rate, which is given by the length of that change vector. So this change vector at this point says, as it were, if you are at this point, move northeast at this speed. And then we talked about the fact that this is now going to take you to another point. And at the other point, at the next point, there's going to be another change vector. And that is going to take you to another point, which has another change vector. And that's how the system is going to evolve following these change vectors. Now, something that is an important part of understanding this is we have to ask the question. I, I said, it's, uh, well, it's almost like Siri. You know, you're, you're standing at this point, and Siri's instruction is head northeast at 10 miles an hour. And at every point, there is this change instruction different from at different points. But now the question is, how do we follow those? And the most important thing is, I left out a key piece of information. You're standing at this point. I give you the change instruction. And the change instruction is head north 
at 10 miles an hour. And what I haven't told you is for how long do I follow this instruction? Well, the minute you ask that question, you see that a certain problem arises. If you follow it for one second, you are wrong. And you are wrong because you followed it for a whole second. You followed the old change instruction for this old point. You followed it for a whole second and just drove right over other change instructions at these intermediate points, which you have ignored. So you have lurched forward in time by one second and thereby missed a whole bunch of intervening change arrows. So you say, well, okay, I'll only obey this instruction for a tenth of a second. That's pretty short. But if you obey it for a tenth of a second, you're still wrong. You're wrong because for a whole tenth of a second, you ro drove past other change arrows and ignored them. So obviously, if the question is, how long do I follow this change instruction? The answer is zero, <laughs> because any finite answer is wrong. So this is a very, very deep problem. And this was the problem that Isaac Newton scratched his head about very, very hard, and came up with calculus. And calculus is the theory of allowing this little time interval here to get shorter and shorter and shorter, in fact, to approach zero and to reach some limit as the thing gets smaller and smaller. Now, that's a great technique, and I'm going to use it here for a second, and then I'm going to take it back. <laughs> so the first thing you need to know is that if we do let the time here get shorter and shorter and shorter, there is a limit to that process. And the limit to that process is uh, an actual curve that is going to be traced out as the change arrows get shorter and shorter. So that's state space, the black, <laughs> and the change arrows, which are green. And we talked about letting those change arrows get shorter and shorter and shorter. And what happens in the limit as those change arrows get super, super, super short? Well, here we are rescued by a very important theorem. And the theorem says there is a unique curve that is everywhere tangent to the change arrows. In other words, as you let these get shorter and shorter, I'm going to draw the red curve, and we're going to put this in red, and we call this the red. The red is the unique curve that is drawn, that is everywhere tangent to the change arrows at that point. And this creates a red curve 
that is in a certain sense the solution to this equation. It is the curve that is traced out. Now if I want this change arrow to go there, I better get back this way and there had better be change arrows taking me back that way. And the theorem guarantees us that there is a single unique curve that is everywhere following the change arrows and that is everywhere tangent to the change arrows. And we talked about the red curve as what you would get if you surfed the change arrows everywhere on a very short board. So there is our red curve. The red curve exists. Here's the theorem that says the red curve exists. And uh, we might as well give you the technical name. The technical name is the Picard-Lindelof theorem, also known as the fundamental theorem on the existence and uniqueness of solutions to ordinary differential equations. And this is a theorem that has almost kind of religious significance for us because it guarantees that the vector field has a unique instruction, that there is a unique path that we get by following the change arrows everywhere. The path exists, it is unique, and it is guaranteed by a mathematical theorem. So that's great. And you think, well, maybe our job is over, but it isn't. Because there is definitely a unique curve. The theorem is not lying. But you'll notice that I'm using, and the theorem is using, the word curve. And that means a geometric object. I'm drawing it right here. Here is the curve. Um, and then that's going to come up here and be tangent there. A curve is a geometric object. The theorem guarantees that the geometric object exists. It is, so to speak, out there. But our question is, can we know the red curve? The theorem guarantees that it's out there, but can you know it? In particular, can you produce the formula for this red curve? And the answer is almost always no. So therein hangs the problem. There is a unique red curve, and so to speak, God knows it, but she's not telling us what the formula is, and the formula by and large does not exist. So we're in a funny situation. We're guaranteed that this object exists, but in 99.9% .9 of the cases, the formula for the red curve is unknowable. Unknown and unknowable. Even in the shark tuna case, the very, very simple shark tuna case of the two variable differential equation, you remember the round trajectories that arose in the shark tuna equation, and now you ask, what is the formula for those egg shaped curves in the shark tuna model? And the answer is, don't ask. There is no formula for those curves. They exist, it's proven that they exist, but their formula is unknowable. So, what's a person to do in this case? And we need to find some way of approximating the red curve, even though we can't know the formula for it. 